What's up, all stars? Welcome to the School of Ireland. Today, we're gonna to talk about the different types of amnesia that people may experience. The first two types of amnesia that we're gonna explore are retrograde and anterograde. The first thing that's important for you to understand is that both of these types of amnesia are caused by physical trauma to the head or a disease like a stroke or a tumor. Now, retrograde amnesia occurs when an individual is unable to recall memories prior to the onset of the amnesia. Individuals who suffer from this will typically lose some or all of their explicit memories, which includes things like facts, names, events, and places. However, they're typically able to hold onto their implicit memories, which has more to do with motor skills like riding a bike, shooting a foul shot, or driving a car. Now, the amount of information that a person can lose can vary from individual to individual. A person can lose bits and pieces of information or entire years of their life. It just depends. Now, the best way for you to remember what retrograde amnesia does is to recall that things that are retro came way back in the day or way before this point in time. So when you see the retro and retrograde, you just need to remember that the amnesia affects memories before the incident. On the other hand, someone with anterograde amnesia is unable to form new memories after the incident. Think Dory from Finding Nemo or Drew Barrymore's character from 50 First Dates. The best way to recall the effects of anterograde amnesia is through the use of alliteration. As I've mentioned, anterograde amnesia makes it so that people can't form new memories after an incident. So all you have to do is remember that anterograde begins with the letter A, and so does the word after. And you'll never be able to forget the impact that this type of amnesia has. Now, retrograde and anterograde amnesia are not the only memory issues that we're gonna talk about today. We're also gonna explore the causes and effects of dissociative amnesia and also a dissociative fugue. Dissociative amnesia is the inability to remember facts or details surrounding a traumatic event that cannot be explained by physical means. In other words, the memory loss is not caused by head trauma or illness. Let me give you an example. Let's say that somebody is robbed in the middle of the night, but don't worry, nobody's harmed. But the event is so traumatizing that for whatever reason is going on up here, the individual is unable to recall what happened for a period of time. And notice that I said a period of time because people with dissociative amnesia are typically able to recover their memories within a few hours. Let's transition over to talk about a dissociative fugue. A dissociative fugue is where a person impulsively wanders away from their home or daily routine and experiences confusion about who they are. Consequently, they often create a new identity for themselves since they are unable to recall events surrounding their past. What's really scary is that it can be hours, weeks, months, or even longer before someone snaps out of the fugue state. And one other important thing to note is that the fugue state is often caused by psychological trauma and not physiological trauma. Well, that's it, all stars. Those are the atypical types of memory loss that you need to know for your psych test. And as always, make sure you smash that like button and hit subscribe if you're someone who wants to dominate your psych class. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.